Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today I have some iPhone 8, 8 Plus and other iOS 11 devices tips and tricks for you. Now these are going to be some tips that you probably haven't seen on other videos. As always, there's a link in the description to the full playlist of iPhone 8 tips, tricks and tutorials. So check that out. Anyway, let's get started. The first tip we're going to go over involves customizing the keyboard a little bit with your iPhone. So what we'll do is open up our messaging application here. We'll start up a new message and when the keyboard is up, we want to tap and hold on the emoji icon. This is going to bring up some keyboard settings. By default, you can see the full keyboard, but if you want to use the keyboard one handed, it might be a little bit easier to transfer it over to the right or to the left. So we'll tap on the right and now that gives you a closer, tighter keyboard that will allow you to access the button a little bit easier if you're using the phone one-handed. Similarly, just tap back to bring it to the original keyboard. And if you want to bring it to the left side, tap and hold on the emoji and bring it back to the left side. The next tip involves the control center. So we'll start by just opening it up by swiping from the bottom upwards. Now this will show you all the standard options and applications that you have. However, each option here, if you press and hold, for example, you use 3D touch, it'll bring up extra options and features for you. Same thing with applications, press and hold. You can see that we have extra options we can play with, but you can add applications to the control center really simply. So we'll go back, we'll tap on our settings application. We'll scroll and tap on control center and we'll tap customize controls. Now you can see which applications are included at the top, but you can also add more controls at the bottom here. So let's add a few more. Let's add the stopwatch. We'll add the low power mode, we'll add our alarm, and let's add the magnifier. When we go back to our control center now, you can see it added all four of those applications for us. Tying in with the control center is an option called record your screen. So what I'm gonna do is tap on settings and I'm gonna add the screen recording option here. So we'll add that in, you can see it's added at the top. We'll pull up our control center and you can see we have the record option. What this is going to do is allow us to record our iPhone screen and you can do anything with this. You can upload it to YouTube, you can upload it to your computer, edit it, and you can create your own videos using your iPhone screen. We can also just use a simple tap to start it up. You can see it says three, two, one, and it'll begin recording. Now, it, while it's recording, you'll see a red bar at the top and you can pretty much do whatever you want, whether it's a tutorial with your phone or if you're just trying to show an error or anything like that. And when you're done, just tap on the top bar here it'll say stop recording, tap stop, and it'll save it to your photos. Now you can tap the banner or just open up your photos application here. And you can see that this is the video we just took. But if we just take a quick look, I have a few here. We'll tap on that one, tap play, and you can see that it's beginning the video. And everything that I did on my screen, you can now see it's happening live. The next tip is disabling auto brightness. Now with the iPhone 8 and iOS 11 in general, Apple went ahead and made it really difficult to find the brightness. Now for starters, it used to be in the display and brightness, but we now have True Tone. So if you wanna turn True Tone off, you can. We'll leave it on, but you used to be able to turn off auto brightness. And what's happening here, as you probably saw from the last clip, is it's really bright on the screen and it keeps trying to bring back the brightness all the way to the top. So to disable it now, what you need to do is tap on general. You then need to go down to accessibility here and you want to tap on display accommodation. Now you can turn off the auto brightness right here. It's set to on by default. It may affect your battery life, but if you're pretty good with your brightness, for example, I usually leave mine here and then at night I'll take it down. It's up to you, but if you're pretty good with it, you should be good with your battery life. The next tip involves controlling the video quality settings that you record in in your camera app. So by default, I record at 1080p at 60 frames per second, but you can set this up to 720 or even 4K, and you can also play around with the slow motion options as well. So where you go to access this is in the settings application. You then wanna scroll all the way down and find the camera settings. Now a tip within a tip here, I have trouble finding that. So if you pull all the way down, you can search for this setting. So we'll tap and type in camera, and here we go, we'll tap camera and we're in the camera settings. Now to control the record settings, we'll tap on record video and you can see we can record at any one of these options. Now you can see that the best option I have here is 4K at 30 frames per second. You can make this better. You can set it up to go 4K at 60 frames. So if we tap back, we tap on formats, you need to be running in high efficiency mode. So if we tap on that, 
We'll go back to camera and then we'll tap on record a video. And from here, now we have 4K at 60 frames. And when you tap on that, you can see it has another little option at the bottom. Now, depending on what you choose, you'll use more or less memory on your phone. You can see the estimates here that Apple provides. So just read through it and set it up the way you'd like. We'll just tap back to our camera here and we'll tap on record slow-mo. Same thing here, just tap on the one that you wanna use and it'll give you a little estimate at how much memory it's going to use when you select it. The next tip involves the emergency mode on your iPhone. Now, this is very important and there has a lot of features within it, so this is a very big tip to really take a look at. So to access it, we need to open up our settings application and we'll tap on emergency SOS. Now from here, by default, this is how it's set up. It's set to auto call. Now, what you do to make this auto call is you have to hold one of the volume rockers and the power button down together and it's gonna automatically call emergency services. So I'll show you by turning it off first and if we hold on both of these buttons, press and hold, it'll access the emergency service. So make sure you turn it off if you wanna test this first. It'll come into a screen like this and if you swipe SOS, to the right, it's gonna call them. You can also slide to power off your device. Now you can activate a five click mode. If we do that, when you click the power button five times, it's gonna go into the emergency mode as well. Now a feature within this, I did a video on this, you can block your touch ID as well as the face ID in the iPhone 10. So when you activate this SOS mode and you tap cancel, if anybody tries to log in with their fingerprint or facial ID, it blocks them and it forces the password. So if you're worried that someone's trying to access your phone, whether you're pulled over and you don't want anybody to be able to access it maybe by showing your face or putting your finger on the button when you're sleeping, you can prevent it by doing this tip here. So I'll just put in my code, very secure. This is where it works. And also you would wanna set up your emergency contacts here. So in the case that you do get into an accident, someone will know who to call. So if you open this up, it'll open up your health app and you can set up your information. You can also say if you're an organ donor, you can put in any allergies you may have all kinds of features like that. I'll place a link in the description for a full video on how to set this up because it could potentially save your life and emergency services now are learning and they know how to activate this and access it in an emergency. So if you're in a car accident, they can check it and potentially save your life. The next tip involves your storage. Now we always run out of storage with our iPhones. However, the iPhone 8 and 10 thankfully are 64 gigabytes by default. But if you wanna manage your storage and you wanna save some space, open up your settings application, scroll down to general, and then you wanna access iPhone storage. Now when you tap on this, you'll be able to see what applications are using most of your storage. You can see it's much better than it was in the past. It has recommendations, you can tap to show all. If you have applications that you don't use very much and Apple notices that maybe they weren't used for a few months, you can delete the application, it'll save your data, kind of save you a little bit more space. You can see it's been never used. If we tap on it, you can delete the application if you don't want it anymore, save some space that way. One thing that I notice a lot of people using their data is the messaging. We message a lot and the actual message history takes up a lot of space, especially if there's all kinds of attachments in it. So if you open up your messaging application and you have a whole bunch of messages here, maybe you have them for years, you can just swipe left delete it, it'll save a little bit of storage space for you. Another option is using something like this. This is a Transcend Jet Drive. It has about 32 gigabytes of memory. Photos and videos take up so much space on these phones and transferring them over to your computer is crazy sometimes. You can just stick this into your lightning port, download all your photos and videos, and then when you're near a computer, just take the USB side, plug it in, transfer it all to your computer. You saved everything super quick, super easy and you can transfer files back and forth between your computer and your phone with this. I'll link you in the description to this. I did a video on it as well. Great little device to have and it's very cheap. You wanna also make sure that if you're running low on storage, that you're not wasting space with random deleted files. So for example, in your photos, when you delete something, let's just delete these and we'll tap the garbage can here. They're not actually deleted, but a lot of people think they are. If we go back to our albums, there's a section down here that says recently deleted. You can see I have a few here. You need to select them here as well and remove them and that will eliminate them completely from your phone. The next tip is another security setting which you want to make sure that you look into because they're a little bit odd in my mind. So for starters, tap on the settings application. We're going to tap on the privacy tab. 
Then we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom here and you can see that advertising, if we tap on that, limit ad tracking is off. You wanna turn that on, it'll limit what the advertisers can see about what you do so that they can't personalize the ads for you. This isn't so bad, it's up to you if you wanna leave that on. The one that's really odd here, if we tap on location services, and if you're sharing your location, you wanna scroll down here to where it says system services. Now it may be way down depending on how many applications you use, but look at how many settings are back here. And some of these are really a little bit too much. For starters, significant locations is on. This feature here when it's on, it's actually gonna show a history of the frequent locations you visit. Now my phone's very new, so I haven't been anywhere with it yet, but you'll see maps, you'll see locations, addresses of where you've been and different locations. And especially if you're home and going to places that you frequently visit, if your phone gets into the wrong hands, this information could potentially put you at risk. So turning this off might be important to you. So that's how you do that. As well as any one of these options here, you can just go through them, turn off the ones that may seem a little bit odd to you. The next tip involves the haptic feedback on the home button. Now, if we tap on settings, tap general, and then tap on home button, we can control this feedback that we receive from here. Now, if you didn't know the iPhone 7 and 8, this is not actually a button, it's just feeling like a button. It vibrates back, making it feel like it's actually clicking. You can control this. So by default, it sets it to two, you can set it to three, give it a tap and you can feel how it feels. One, barely feels anything. I like to keep mine at two or three and pretty much when you set it, just tap done. And now anytime you use the home button, whatever feedback you set it to is what you're going to feel. The next tip involves forcing your iPhone to restart. Now in the past, it was used in many different ways, but now with the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, you need to use a different method here. It's a little bit tricky, and this is good if your iPhone ever freezes, crashes, or anything like that. It'll force it to restart and bring you back. So what you need to do is press on the volume rocker up and release quickly, then press on the volume rocker down and release quickly and then hold the side button on the iPhone. So let's go ahead and do that. So up button, down button, hold on the power button. And you want to hold on this for a few seconds until you see the Apple logo and the phone restarts. And there you go. The phone will begin restarting. You'll see the Apple logo and that means the phone is restarting itself and you can release. And that's pretty much how you force a restart on the iPhone. The next tip will show you how to disable 3D touch. Now, some people find it annoying, especially when it comes to deleting apps. When you press on an application, it'll pop up with other options. This is 3D touch. But when you wanna delete applications, sometimes it's a little bit difficult because you end up activating 3D touch rather than just holding. So to activate it or disable it, tap on the settings application, tap general, and then scroll down and tap accessibility. From here, we'll look for 3D touch. We'll tap on that and you can activate it or disable it like so. Now when it is active, you can control the sensitivity. So how hard or how light you need to press to activate it. And that might actually help you if you add it to firm. So play around with it or disable it if you find it annoying. Anyway, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're looking to learn more basic and advanced tips, tricks, and tutorials with the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, and the iPhone 10, click the link in the description. It'll take you to the full playlist of videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.